Yo, High school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, big up, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make willing cup. The watch the champions cup, Ben Francis. Walk a cup with team, I win the championship this season. Yo, Issa. Papa Banda, if a school, I go finish the league and meet now. Which you, I go collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yeah, good music, good vibe. It's a schoolboy football season in Jamaica. Kicked off Saturday with a triple header at the Montego Bay Sports Complex at Catherine Hall, plus a number of other rural area the Costa Cup matches elsewhere. Two games were shown live on your home of champions from the feature venue with Manning Cup title holders Mona High putting in a ruthless display against Waterford to start proceedings. Mona coming away 7 0 winners with Carlton Brown on the double. Here's head coach Carl Butler, of course, the son of technical director Craig Butler. Definitely a statement win. Definitely the foundation is there, but we're still in second gear. We still have a lot we can improve on. We could have won around 10 easily, but as I say, the foundation is there and we want to build on that. Your boy. Yeah, head coach of Waterford High, Kevin Reed, reflected on the tough outing. Um, today, but nevertheless, um, you know, I believe they, they learned something today, and I believe the best team won today. So we just have to just get back in training, put in some more work, and hopefully, hopefully, we will have a better second game. Yeah, now following the Manning Cup curtain raiser, reigning the Costa Cup champions, Clarendon College took on parish rivals Denby High and they were in for quite a test. Clarendon College coming away with a hard fought 2 1 win to the delight of their technical director, Lenworth Hyde. Very happy for the three points. I see some glimpses of what I want to see, how we pass the ball and how we move the ball. In this league now, this team have to grow in the league, and you will see some emerging players coming up, coming up this season out of this team. But I'm pleased with what I saw today. Yes. All right, it was a pretty busy Saturday for the Da Costa Cup. So let's get caught up on the results coming out of that on Saturday. Um, Clarendon College, of course, uh, the defending champions coming away with that 2-1 victory over Denby. Um, all the results coming through Cornwall College, the Theodore Whitmore Coached Cornwall College 4-1 over Herbert Morrison. Manchester High with Donovan Ducky getting a 3-0 victory over Cross Keys. The big coaches coming out on opening day. Christiana, impressive 7-0 over Troy. Alphansis Davis 1-0 over Knox College. Belfield 2-1 over Mile Gully. Homo Technical 4-0 over Alston. Veer Technical, the nine-time the Costa Cup champions, getting the better of Porus by four goals to one. Fogger Road and Old Harbour ending nil all Glenmuir last season's Champions Cup winners and the three-time Costa Cup champions 5-0 over Kempsill fine start for them the two-time winners Garvey Masio remember they last one in 2021 impressive as well 7-0 over Winston Jones Paul Bogle losing 1-0 to Yalis. Happy Grove 3-0 over St. Thomas Technical Seaforth 4-2 over Robert Lightburn and Port Antonia High 3-0 over St. Mary Technical yeah, a lot of great the Costa Cup action to start the competition at the weekend. Lidgey Williams is here with us to take us through what happened to start the schoolboy football season in Jamaica. He was at the Montego Bay Sports Complex at Catherine Hall to witness the opening matches. And Lidgey, we can't start anywhere else but Mona because they were really impressive coming into the season. I did hear that St. Catherine High will be extremely difficult to beat. And then I saw Mona on Saturday and thought to myself, well, if St. Catherine High will be difficult to beat, then Mona must be impossible to beat. What did you see? Yeah, I saw a really well-coached team, a really well-drilled team. Um, we know from last season how impressive they are. Mona are a team filled with quality. They only lost two notable players. So I expected them to be dominant, I expected them to be rampant, and they really just played up to their reputation, and a lot of their big players came to the fore, you know, Denzel McKenzie getting a goal, last season's 
um, best player in the Manning Cup, he was named. So, yeah, this Mona team looked imperious and I expect them to look so for majority of the season. Yeah, trying to get these things out of the way very early in the campaign. But I remember last year, the Mona technical director, Craig Butler, um, saying that Denzel McKenzie was the best number 10 in the country. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult to argue with him. Uh, so you over... think he is the best number 10 in the country? I, I, I don't think he was talking just cool boy football, by the way. So let <laughs> me get that out there. I, 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 think, I think maybe when he plays a little bit of Premier League football, then maybe we'll see if he actually is. But a definite schoolboy football, he was right up there. You can't argue with over 30 goal contributions uh, playing with your peers. So I think Denzel McKenzie is extremely impressive. Yeah, and since we're singling out players and we're talking quality, Carlton Brown was so impressive in this match. And at the end of the game, you know, he was speaking, as you all usually interview the man of the match, and he said, you know, he just wants to prove to Jamaica that he is the best defensive player around and he has more where that came from. What do you make of his early statements? Yeah, he, he's, a, I mean, just like all of the, the Mona and Phoenix players, you know, he's extremely confident. I think Carlton Brown had a pretty good game. He was playing in the pivot with Alex Suazo, the, the midfield pivot, that is, and he got opportunities to take on some shots from range, took one. It was an excellent finish from him, as you can see there, and he scored another goal in the first half as well, which was yeah. being at the end of a sweeping move. And I think Mona... They played a very expansive style of football. Um, I expect them to continue playing that expansive style of football. I expect them to score a lot of goals. Um, they have a clear tactic which was worked on overloading the, the wings, playing in the half spaces, getting that cut back to the penalty spot, which is something that even the national team tried to do and Friday to different levels of success, of course. But Mona did it really efficiently. They scored several goals from there. And when it comes down to ball striking, that's Craig Butler's bread and butter when it comes down to coaching his players. So all of his players, that's why he saw so many good goals from range. So this Mona team looks good. Carlton Brown looks good. Denzel McKenzie looks good. Suaza looks good. Robinho Gordon looks great. Everybody uh, looks good. Yeah, it, it's going to be tough to beat them again. But I do think there are a couple teams in the Manning Cup that can cause them some problems. Yeah, and you know, listening to the Waterford coach at the end, speaking about he really needed this match against Mona High because it, of course, showed him from very early some of the areas that Waterford needed to work on how bad was Waterford on the weekend I mean it's difficult I mean one of the complaints that people generally have when it comes down to schoolboy football is that majority of the players don't get to play football throughout the year yeah. I would imagine that would be the case for a lot of this Waterford team and a lot of them are younger players as well they, they came with a pretty young squad so I think it was always going to be difficult to compete with a Mona team that has players playing club football, going on tours in Europe, constantly playing football throughout the year. So I'm never going to be too harsh on a team that, you know, gets trampled by a team of this quality. But I think tactically they weren't as prepared as I would, I would have liked them to be, maybe a little bit naive. But nonetheless, I, I think all the credit has to go to Mona as opposed to trashing on water for a bit. Well, two things on that, Liz, and continue with what Mariah was just asking, because listening to the commentary, you guys as the experts were suggesting that in the second half especially, they were expecting Waterford to uh, implement some damage control, try to be a little tighter. So it was obvious they weren't going to match Mona, but try to keep the, the result or the scoreline as, as low as possible. And they weren't able to do that. Was it that they didn't try to do that or Mona didn't allow them to, to do that? I think it's, it's mainly Mona didn't allow them to. Maybe the, the game planning coming into the game wasn't as quite precise when it comes down to having a plan A, a plan B, because as you see here, maybe a coach can go out and say, keep it tight. And then you have Mona players racing through and goal from 40 yards. At the end of the day, you have to always remember when it comes down to schoolboy football, something that gets lost and a lot of the Jamaican population may be in Trinidad as well. These are under 19 players. They're going to make mistakes. They're not going to be as you know, tactically astute when it comes down to holding positions and so on and so forth. Especially as a team like Mona, that I said, that play football so often together. So I, I, I think it, it, it's pretty tough. It's tough on the coach, it's tough on the players. But I still would have liked to see a, a little bit more preparation. But again, I, I really have to praise Mona for this victory. Yeah, of course, the Costa Cup started at the weekend as well. Clarendon College, the title holders getting the better of Denby in a rather close game. Whereas Mona start among the favorites for the Manning Cup to defend their title. Where do you have Clarendon College given the number of players they have lost and the quality they have lost as well? Yeah, in the pre-game show, I mentioned that I think that I have them second at, at current. I, I, I have to respect the, 
the quality that they do have and although the the last seven of their starters from the Dacosta Cup final 12 of their 23 man squad yesterday were in and around or played the Costa Cup minutes last season so it's still a relatively experienced squad as you can see Hayes there who really Haynes there had a really good game scored the goal I, I think that they do have quality in their team still but I think my biggest issue I, I have to go against the, the expert and the coach here in Lenny Hyde he was saying he was pleased with the passing I, I wasn't pleased with it at all I think their general midfield makeup yesterday wasn't necessarily the best there's a lot of fluidity in terms of all three of the midfield players yeah. playing sometimes at the base sometimes a little bit out wide sometimes a little bit further up and i think that left them susceptible on transitional moments and in time and time again i think if then be even had a little more quality yeah. they would have caused klein and college some problems and eventually they did made the game really close and it's still early in the season i expect klein to get better but i i wasn't overly pleased and their their, their performance yesterday didn't fill me with too much confidence. Yeah, of course you say that you have Clarendon College as second favourites. Does that mean that you have Glenmuir High as favourites? Because they were pretty impressive to start and they have a number of quality players coming from last year and they have Andrew Peart who just yeah. won the Under 14 Challenge Series with the Jamaicans. Yeah, you listed off all the reasons why I would have Glenmuir as favourites and I do actually. I think that they're a quality team and I, was, I, I spoke previewing the game not only the teams to watch in the Dakasta Cup, but the players to watch as well. And when it comes down to the team, they've barely lost any players. They still have majority of their best players, apart from their captain last year, Kyle Gordon, which is a big miss. But in essence, they've replaced him with a national under-20 representative in Dustin Cohen, who has come across from Denby. Maybe if Denby had him yesterday, they would have caused even Different, more, yeah. more yeah. problems for Clarendon College. So. I think Dustin Cohen coming across, at one point he was the youngest player ever to play in the Jamaica Premier League. So I think that's a huge, huge talent that Glenmere have gotten getting from their neighbours, Denby. And I think that's even going to add to the quality that they'll have this season. And I can't, I can't look past them being the favourites for the Dacosta Cup. Yeah, one of my favourite players, um, Tajon Cummins, is still in that Glenmuir setup. Jason White as well. Jason who White I is love. there, your favourite player. <laughs> Definitely. Um, we are fast running out of time. I'm going to steal a quick second here because I'm getting a live score coming through from the Manning Cup competition. <laughs> Kingston College trailing Penwood by two goals to one wow. in their opening encounter. Yes. That's it was been the reaction. Point, right? Wow. No, it was 1 0 to Penwood, 1 all. Um, Kingston College equalized, and then Penwood went in front. By the way, the match is not done yet, but I just wanted to get a quick comment from LeJay in terms of what we're to expect from Kingston College. Some people call them the crowd favorites. Um, that's because they travel with a massive crowd. Um, but yes, they were beaten by Calabar, by the way, in pre season. Um, that result struck me. Um, so what should we make of this KC team quickly? I mean, I also watched KC in preseason in the Europa Cup against St. George's and they look pretty impressive on that day. I'm not quite sure mm -hmm. what's happening at the, the Penwood game right now, but uh, maybe maybe it's just a, a little... Penwood is a team they have beaten in level nil last year, remember? Yeah, I, I can't say anything now. I'm not watching the game, yes. so I can't give my analysis. That's what but I are do. you shocked? Because we're all shocked. Yeah, yeah. I just want to know about what you think of the overall quality of this year's it, Kingston it, College team and it, whether they can go it, deep, whether it, it, they it's, can it's, be it's, a top I, I, four I, I, team. Go, coming into the season, yes, because they basically have the same team, similar to Glenmuir, but... If they're struggling, then they're struggling. Yeah. Campion is in that group, so if <laughs> KC continue to struggle, then maybe we'll see Campion top Let's wait too. and see. It's so early in the season. Let's not get excited. We didn't even ask you to do a prediction just yet. So no, you know, no, it's no, early. No, no, it's no, early. No, no, no. Let's, let's, let's save him that. Let's give him some time. No, that's got, what I said. He we got, didn't. He got the Jamaica prediction wrong on Friday for the Nations League. Let's not put him in another position so quickly. Give him time. Let's take a break. Lije is going to stay with us because we have CONCACAF Nations League yeah. football to talk about and yeah yeah stay with us <laughs> Missy fans are roll out all boat, be a flag pan vehicle. Looking at the good, bus load the supporters from school and community too. People nothing at the stand, some are listening to radio, some are watching on TV too. Country and town unite, we want race.